Um, yes, so I will present uh, findings of uh, the GEN part study, the gendered pathways of social exclusion in later life and consequences for health and well-being. Um, Should I point in a certain direction? Ah, there. Um, very briefly, this was a, a project with uh, six countries. Ireland, uh, well, let's start from the, from the top. Masaryk University, Czech Republic. There were uh, the principal investigator, Lucy Vidovicova, sorry for that, Vidovicova was, uh, she was the principal investigator, like I said. And then there was an associated partner from uh, Czech Republic, uh, Zivot 90, Life 90. Then Oslo, Met, uh, Oslo Metropolitan University, Norway, University of Barcelona, Spain, Uni Linköping University um, uh, from Sweden, uh, and uh, National University of Ireland, Galway, University of Vienna, and Haifa, uh, Israel. That was the group, and and as you can see, most of the disciplines we were uh, very much in the in the social sciences and the social and the psychology, some gerontology. So it was a bit, a bit uh, maybe a bit uh, monodisciplinary, but still, well, we well, at least we had very different backgrounds. Uh, some were quantitative, some were very qualitative. Uh, so we learned, uh, nevertheless, uh, despite these close disciplines, a lot from each other. I would say. Um, yeah, and uh, like I said before, the, the main focus of this uh, project was on social exclusion, and the reason to focus on social exclusion is, is that still many people are socially excluded, uh, ranging from 15 to 30 percent uh, of people in, in Europe are socially excluded from mainstream uh, society, and women have a disproportionately high risk to become socially excluded. And for that, it's important to, um, I don't know, I do something wrong, I guess. Ah, here. Um, uh, so social exclusion in itself is a very multidimensional concept, but um, uh, in gen part, we focused on only one dimension, which was exclusion from social relations. And in short, we tend to use this, to tend to call this ESR, about exclusion from social relations. And that we defined as a situation in which people are socially and emotionally disconnected from adequate levels of intimate relationships, social network, social support, and or social opportunities. Um, it, it's, I think, good to realize that social exclusion or exclusion from social relation has both objective and subjective components or aspects. The objective part is that a person is really excluded from other people in an objective way. There are no other uh, people around or only a few, and that actually what we often call social isolation. But there's also a subjective part, which then is actually um, a mismatch between what a person wants to have and, and what they desire and what they have. The quality, and that is actually what we call loneliness. It is unwanted in its own right, but also because of the physical and the mental conditions related to exclusion from social relations. It is an increased risk for hospital admission and premature death uh, that is associated with both uh, social isolation and loneliness. And also, there are studies say, saying that it might be the outcome of a lifelong process for which the seeds are maybe already planted in childhood, uh, but, but uh, evidence is still a bit, a bit scarce. There were four objectives. One is to examine the gendered pathways from early life socioeconomic conditions, micro, meso, and macro influences to exclusion from social relations in later life. Second objective was to examine the health and well being outcomes in later life. Third is to provide scientific knowledge about how precise the welfare states is sort of associated in a whole thing, influences the constructions and outcomes of exclusion. Uh, for both genders, and then also to inform policies and social actors. Uh, here we have a list of uh, papers. Uh, I'm not going to read them out, but there are various, various topics, uh, social participation, network and solitude satisfaction, um, also doing research in pandemic times, which is a, very much a time of social isolation, life course transitions, um, societies, low trust societies, and then uh, some other thing uh, as well, and here another list of papers. Uh, and and I, I will only highlight a few which I think uh, is nice to share with you. 
Um, so, so one of one of the things we did was to make a model where we were based on the literature, based on it was not an extensive extensive uh, literature review, but but at least a, a collection of papers on on the topic, where we found that uh, okay, why are women disadvantaged with respect to social exclusion, or more often excluded, uh, is that they are more often caregivers, therefore disrupted careers. That leads to economic disadvantage and then a limited option for social and economic participation in later life, which in turn leads to social isolation and loneliness. Well, it's a, it sounds very simple, but uh, in, in practice it's um, hard to, to change uh, uh, in the end. Another study found that there is a very clear northwest to southeast uh, gradient in, in Europe with, with, well, the most excluded rates in, in, in the southeast, so maybe the richer the countries, we could say, the lower the rate of exclusion of social relations, also culture plays a role, and I think uh, Nordic countries are very uh, well in, in, in having a very low inequality gender-wise. Uh, all these things, I think, uh, contribute to, to these um, northwest-southeast gradient. Um, and of course, the stronger welfare states in the Northwest. Um, another finding was that transitions, and a transition is, for example, from good health to ill health or to uh, losing your partner to bereavement, retirement, relocation, moving from one to another city, these transitions translate into multidimensional experiences of exclusion from social relations. That was a qualitative uh, study. And here we had another study uh, that focused specifically on how it is to be alone and feel alone in relation to mental health. And this finding was that the uh, impact was much higher for women than for men. Uh, why that is the case, well, therefore we need uh, more money, I think. Uh, I don't, sorry, no. Uh, but well, one reason might be that, uh, that for the women tend to be more the the, the, the keepers of the social networks and the, the social relations tends to be a, a female thing in many, many countries. Another uh, study uh, very nicely found how early childhood conditions can lead to loneliness in, in late life. So about the long arm of, of childhood, um, how to speak. speak. Um, but interestingly, it's not similar for men and women. For men, it are mostly the physical conditions, whereas for women, it's the cultural capital of the family. That is the seed that is planted in, in the youth. That leads to later life loneliness and social isolation. So here's just, just a uh, well, sort of collection. Of, there's much more results, but I think for now, this uh, highlights at least the different outcomes, outcomes we had. Another thing we did was trying to come up with a sort of model how it exclusion from social relation is shaped more or less by, by uh, micro level, do I have a pointer here? No. Uh, you see here in the back the individual drivers, for example, conditions, relationship standards, transitions, and these things, but also the macro level drivers, like how, the, how safe a neighborhood is or, or what kind of welfare state provisions there are. And these two, in interaction, has an effect on exclusion from social relations, which in turn then leads to loneliness. And here, and how about gender? Well, actually, gender, I would say, it's, is is everywhere. All these arrows. If you do quantitative research, you will see that almost each arrow is sort of modified by gender. Uh, it's different for men and women in in in, in these relations. It's very hard to. Uh, not take gender into account because then you you will get different outcomes. Another lecture, another uh, outcome was a lecture. So we, we developed a lecture on um, old age exclusion from social relations and how that is shaped by by gender for secondary schools uh, in all the national languages. So it's uh, three three different uh, worksheets for teachers about loneliness, ageism. What is loneliness? How can we actively listen to others? And, and another lesson about alone, being alone and feeling alone. Um, yeah, well, this was a, so what's the socioeconomic impact? I don't know, uh, at least I think maybe it's about impact. I think this is the impact uh, the, the project had on, on us as researchers, but also around us. I think there is 
the studies we did lead, led to an increased awareness of the nature of gender differences in later life loneliness and social isolation, an increased understanding at least of gendered risk factors, raised awareness of undergraduates, undergraduates about loneliness and social isolation, because we developed this lecture, and also hopefully a raised awareness of policymakers, stakeholders, and all the people uh, about these gender differences in loneliness. And um, we also want to sort of emphasize here that attention to childhood conditions is, is very important and very much overlooked as well at the moment. Uh, and I think taking that into account would help to improve the efficiency of, uh, of interventions to reduce it. So there, almost there, but what, to, what is left, I think this is maybe the most important uh, slide, at least for me. What, what should we do next? And I think we should move beyond the more descriptive or the mere descriptive studies of gender differences and try to well, focus on, on, on things, trying to understand how, how this works out. One could be uh, how it works with social conflicts over the life course, how that has a gendered impact on social isolation loneliness. Uh, maybe also how, how forced isolation, well, well, we had this period with COVID where many people were isolated from others, whether they wanted it or not. How does that impact uh, on loneliness uh, for men and women? That is a question we, we do not so much, so, know, so much about. We do not know so much about. Uh, this is another a really interesting question, I would say. How do welfare states professions moderate all these associations? Um, we, I think we, in, the, in our project at least, we just started to think about that more clearly. Well, we, we can see that welfare states differ in, in these associations, but how precisely? That's still, I think, quite open. Um, and also, how can we understand the gender inequalities in life expectancy, uh, healthy life expectancy? Well, we heard the previous speaker who did work there, uh, but there's still, I think, uh, a way to go. And how are childhood socioeconomic conditions associated with trajectories of mental physical health? And why is it different for men and women? And then I think the last, but not certainly not least, uh, so exclusion from social relation is a state where people can be in, but you can also get out again. And that is maybe also important to take into account at a certain moment. So how do people get in the exclusion state? And how do, we, how do they get out of it again? And then which factor, factors protects? Um, I think this was the last slide, yes, uh, so that was it.